Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of the Grain Feed brought to you by EverAg. This week, we are combining forces with our very own Pastor to Pen media series. So this week's episode is your weekly news feed for all things beef and all things feed. Each week, we bring you updates on the market with unique perspectives, an amazing team of analysts with the intention of helping dairy and livestock producers manage their risk. I'm your co-host, Jim Matthews, reporting from the home office in Chicago, co-hosting with me today from our world-renowned Pasture to Pen series. He puts the heart in Dal Hart. It's livestock broker and agent, Mr. Michael Todd Rowan. And from the grain feed, he's the worth of Fort Worth. It's the director of feed procurement, Mr. Jake Kingsley. Team, how are we today? Things are good. Good weather. Spring's on the way. Feed prices are headed in the right direction. Hey, no. Nothing to complain about here. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And we got an MT, the host of Pasture to Pen. Things are looking good on your side? Things are good on our side, Jim. The sun's up and the cattle prices are up. So we are happy. Oh, that's fantastic. That's that's really all we can ask for, right? Feeds down, cattle's up, the sun's up. We're feeling good. We've got a mashup of our media series. I bet there's, there's going to be some cool graphics and sound bites going on here on the screen. I don't even know what's going to happen. I could do my I could do my movie voice. If we want to do some voiceovers. Cannon right? like, going off. Guys shouting, remember the Alamo. We're going to have all yeah. of it, Jim. Oh, We're going to yeah. have all Cowboys of it. Cowboys just running around on screen. We could do the movie. I could be like, in a world where the grain feed mashes with pasture to pen. Right? We could go nuts with this. We thing. could go nuts. Oh, my. We could go nuts. We could Just go like nuts. when Dick went nuts. Last week, when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, and he had a baby in a 24-hour period. Congratulations to you, Jake. Thank you. I appreciate that. I worked pretty hard for those things, <laughs> and it uh, feels good to finally see it pay off. <laughs> you deserve some credit, so we'll just we'll leave it at that. But congratulations to you, buddy. We're happy for you, and good to have you back on the show. We do have a lot to run through today with this big mashup. So before before we timestamp the broadcast, though, I just would like to say that a handful of us ever aggers were out in Tulare last week at the World Ag Expo. It was so wonderful to be back out there. It was my third show in a row. Great to see everyone. And a huge thanks to everyone who stopped by our booth, who came to our reception, who just took the time out of their day and evenings to come spend time with us, to talk with us, talk markets, talk life, talk family. You name it. It was so good to be with you. So thank you again for making it a wonderful and worthwhile show. Really good stuff and great to see everyone. So thank you for that. Now, Paige, if you would kindly timestamp the broadcast. It is Thursday morning. We have a quick look at the grain markets before I turn it over to my co-host, Michael Todd. We've got corn down slightly again today. We're continuing on this downtrend in corn. We've got May futures are now just below 420 on the board here this morning. We've got these futures trying to approach 450 on December futures. So both hugging that trend, I would even argue that those Bay futures have broken through that downtrend line and are really in a new threshold here for some of the old crop corn pricing. We look at beans that are down again today. In the red, you've got May sub 1160. You've got Nov sub 1140. Things have been looking pretty bearish in the soy complex. I don't know if you watched Tech Talk this past week with Cody and Andy. I had a shout out for suggesting we look at May beans. Things are not looking great for May beans. Those guys called it very well on that bearish move there. And then meal, that not so stubborn. Little byproduct anymore, also hugging that downward trend and no chance really at this stage of breaking out. We thought we had a couple days of up days, followed by some swift returns to the lows, which we're very happy to see for those feeding these products. MT, what are you seeing on the livestock side? We are seeing a lot of green on the board today, Jim. We've got March feeders. Close to 254 and a half today. And we've got February live cattle knocking on the door of 180 
five. These prices speak to the interesting dynamics going on in the cattle complex. To start, we have stability in the outside markets, which are being very supportive of cattle prices right here. We've got crude oil under 80 bucks a barrel and nat gas under two bucks. This not only keeps inputs cheap, for the producer, but the consumer as well. In terms of the consumer, beef demand has been very, very resilient. Consumers continue to signal they are buying beef, even if it's at varying price points. We have seen consumers trade down, but at the end of the day, they are buying beef. This has led to a counter seasonal trend in the beef cutout. After moving to a most recent low around the 278 mark, choice beef is back in the mid 290s, with select not far behind in the mid 280s. This is also very supportive of the cattle prices we are currently seeing. The futures market has taken these data points, added in our tight supply, and has simply just ran away with it. Both feeder and live cattle futures have moved higher in 10 of the last 11 weeks and are staring week 11 of 12 right in the face. Both sides of the board are overbought from a technical perspective and have been overbought for several weeks now. However, back in the fall, when we moved lower, we were oversold for several weeks. So if the law of averages always wins, I can imagine us being overbought and moving higher for a little while longer. This presents a unique opportunity for producers to manage risk. We have feeder futures that currently hold a $9 premium over cash, leaving plenty of room on the board to use futures and options or LRP. Live cattle futures are not too far ahead of cash, about $3 to even depending on which region you're in. Cattle feeders have some margin opportunity on the cash side, but these high priced feeder futures have some cattle feeders pinching pennies. With that being said, this break in the feed and protein market has helped cattle producers of all shapes and sizes not only manage margin, but also enjoy some profitability. And Jake, speaking of margin, what are you seeing in terms of margin and profitability in the feed realm this week? Yeah, I think we're seeing a lot of the legwork come from the future side in the feed world here. We've seen As Jim had mentioned earlier, some pretty healthy moves lower, both in corn and protein futures values. Corn's down here testing some new lows yet again. Soybean meal is down here in the low to mid 300s and feeling like it's going to sustain those types of numbers for the first time in quite a while. So we've seen the breakdown in cash prices come on the futures front. Basis numbers have been, again, relatively stagnant, but we don't have a whole lot of anxiety for some kind of a volatile move to the upside anytime soon. I think there's still a couple of key pieces in place here that should we start to see some good data coming out of South America as they get their harvest going and confirming some of their yields, we get into or closer to the planting window here in the US, we certainly could see some downward movement in those basis numbers, both I think in corn and soybean and canola meal. We've seen a lot of other byproducts, soy holes, wheat mids, cotton seeds been kind of stagnant, but a lot of these other forage based byproducts are starting to slide with the market as California continues to receive some maybe a little bit uh, inconvenient but needed moisture out there to allow them to maintain their fiber inventories in that part of the world. That's brought a lot of pressure off of the Midwest. We're seeing cottonseed kind of hang in there. That crop just was decimated in the Western production areas, and it's probably going to remain a fairly firm value through most of the feed year. And then you've got distillers that With corn maintaining some relatively steady and say versus historical numbers, firm basis in the Midwest, those ethanol plants continue to have to pay just a little more than they'd like to for corn. That's kind of kept distillers numbers elevated. There's still a steady little export program going on there, but I think it's a matter of time before the input values drop on that product. They lose a little bit of their demand by these other proteins dropping natural cyclical demand of cattle coming out of the feedlot or pen situations and into summer grasses that kind of naturally bring down our domestic demand on distillers. And we probably see a pretty healthy slide in those values sooner rather than later. 
There are a lot of opportunities starting to pop up in the feed market here. I think if you're looking to capture some margin, you can certainly step out there and take advantage of some of these breakdowns in prices and pin them up against some of your revenue generating uh, products. But again, the upside anxiety is rather limited at this point. So you can afford to be patient on some forward purchases as well, if you'd like. Plenty of different things going on that we can kind of talk about there. It's to be a little bit case by case with coming into spring and different feed availabilities on your farm. Awesome. Thank you for that, Jake. For our beef guys out there that are looking to buy feed, do you have a recommendation on how far out a producer could or should buy and store it for later? This is a pretty broad stroke to cover a large feed market here, but I think generally you could be comfortable in the spot market or just go month to month or maybe 60 days out. I think you can keep this kind of close to the vest here, pretty short purchasing windows for a while. Like I said, the upside risk seems to be fairly limited. It seems like there may be more downside opportunity to go. So I guess at the very least, if you're going to go out and book something through, say, June or into September, just to capture some profitability as the market allows it here now, certainly consider doing something with puts or some sort of an option strategy on a portion of it to kind of keep yourself flexible. But I think generally a little bit of short term purchasing is a pretty cost effective way to work right now. And Jake, you've also you've been telling guys to keep things, like you said, close to the vest too on their corn purchases. And I think one thing you can do with your old crop is just because we've been in this long-term channel now, this long-term trend, volatility has remained very weak for the corn market. So you could essentially buy spot while it's still using some, you know, maybe July calls, just buying outright calls, giving yourself a ceiling, protect yourself for, let's say, the next four months worth of old crop corn buying just in case something goofy happened in this market. We've been talking with folks, you know, MT, when we're talking to guys, it's what is out there that's a potential risk to the futures market for corn. There's not much there. We're watching South America very closely. Of course, we are expecting production numbers to come down across Brazil and start to match maybe what some of the local projections are. But is it enough to really shake this market? Not really. I mean, have the Chinese come out of their Lunar New Year and decided they're going to aggressively buy U.S. grains again? Absolutely not. So there's just not a lot out there at the moment. Even when a handful of us were in Tulare last week, we had the USDA Outlook Forum, which our very own Mike McGinnis was out there reporting live from the forum. There's nothing bullish coming out of there either, right? The expecting 91 million acres of corn. We're expecting big boy, 2 billion bushel ending stocks once again. So there's there's just not a lot out there. We've seen the managed money positions continue to extend their very heavily net short corn position. Perhaps maybe that's the most bullish thing of this market is if those guys get spooked, they can suddenly start to cover those shorts and start to maybe bring at least some support back into the marketplace. But overall, yeah, that's what we've been telling folks, MT, is you know try and stay patient on these corn purchases. I know it's been tough after what we've seen volatility wise and price strength wise the last couple of years. But that's what you can use the futures market for an options market is to protect yourself just in case something does run higher out of nowhere again. Awesome. Thank you, gentlemen. That's kind of what we've been seeing and thinking on the cattle side, but it's always nice to have confirmation from two of the best that we can talk to. Well, gents, I mean, that was some pretty awesome dialogue there. And MT, that was huge to have you on the show co-hosting this thing. Hammer and Jake with the big questions, baby, of what we're going to do with the feed market this year while running those cattle prices up. And like you guys both said, hey, you know, price is up on your side, price is down on our feed side, and the sun is up. Let's take advantage of it. Excellent work, both of you today. A huge shout out. MT, thank you for co-hosting and being with us in this mashup of Pasture to Pen and the Grain Feed. A big thanks to everything you do, MT, for our livestock producers out there. So thank you. And a big thanks to the Everag Insights crew for their support. Thank you to Paige for production magic. And thank you to the viewers for watching this special edition of the Grain Feed. Contact information is on the screen. We greatly appreciate your MT feedback. That's all for today. We'll see you next time on Pasture to Pen and the Grain Feed. <laughs>